So <coughs> for section 9.4, ladies and gentlemen, again, we're still working on our infinite series. So now we're going to take a look um, at some other tests that we can use to decide on the convergence or divergence of a series if it's not a telescopic or not a geometric series. So here are the four tests we're going to talk about um, in this particular section. We've actually done the integral test, believe it or not, back in Chapter 7 when we were doing our improper integrals. So again, um, most of our series will start at 0, 1 or some other value. And again, where it's starting is irrelevant to the issuance of convergence because again, we're concerned about what happens at the end of the series. The kth term of the infinite series is called the general term. So whether I start the series at k is equal to 1, k is equal to 10, again, I'm more concerned about the series as it's approaching infinity. So the first test we're going to talk about is the divergence test. This is also can be referred to in some books or um, you may read as the nth term test. So the nth term test, the divergence test are the same thing. And this is the way the divergence test works. When you go to try to find the limit as k goes to infinity, if it does not equal 0, then the series diverges. So again, the test is that if it does not equal 0, then it diverges. However, if it does equal 0, it may either converge or diverge. The test is inconclusive. So it doesn't. So we'd have to pick another test to check to see if it's converging or diverging. So if the sequence does not converge to 0, you're done. Then the series diverges. If the sequence <coughs> converges to 0, then the series may diverge or converge. Like I said, another test is required. This test is inconclusive. So here are two examples for uh, sequence converging to 0. The sequence converges to 0, and the series converges. Here is your uh, 1 plus 1 over 2 plus 1 over 3 plus 1 over k. This sequence converges to 0, but the series diverges. This is our harmonic series. So like I said, the divergence test tells us only divergence if the limit is equal to 0. The converse of this theorem is false. You switch the hypothesis and the conclusion. So let's take a look at the way the divergence test works. So apply the divergence test and tell what you know about the series. State whether it diverges or if our test is inconclusive. So for example, here is our k divided by e to the k as k is equal to 1 to infinity. So what I want to do is find the limit as k goes to infinity of k divided by e to the k. Again, using your limit rule, I can take the limit of the numerator and divide it by the limit of the denominator. Well, the limit as k goes to infinity of k is going to be infinity. The limit as k goes to infinity for e to the k is also infinity. So I can apply L'Hopital's rule. So the limit as k goes to infinity, and again, the derivative of k is just a 1. Derivative of e to the k is just an e to the k. So this is 1 divided by a really, really, really large number. So this is approaching 0. So this tells us nothing about this particular series. This test is inconclusive. We'd have to pick another test when we get to other tests to, to, te to see what's happening with this particular series. So let's take a look at b k is equal to 0 to infinity, sine of pi over 2 plus k pi. So again, if you take a look here, when you have sine and cosine, you have to be careful because these could be an alternating, um, a hidden alternator, or it could also be an oscillation. So let's just plug in 0 for k. So this is going to be 0 plus pi over 2. So the sine of pi over 2 is 1. If I plug in a 1 for k, pi over 2 plus 1 pi, that's going to give me a 3 pi over 2, and the sine of 3 pi over 2 is negative 1. If I plug in 2 for k, pi over 2 plus 2 pi is going to put me back up at um, 5 pi over 2, which is going to give me a positive 1. And notice what's happening. This is an, alter this is an oscillation. This is going back and forth between negative 1 and 1. So this is going to diverge. It's an oscillation. So if you look at c, k is equal to 1 to infinity, the limit as k goes to infinity of the natural log of k, <coughs> this is approaching infinity. 
So this is going to, um, again, the divergence test is inconclusive, but since the natural log of k is going to infinity, we know this is going to diverge. And then your factorial, <coughs> 4 divided by the quantity of k plus 1 factorial, find the limit. As k goes to infinity of 4 over k plus 1 factorial. So this is a constant divided by a really, really, really large number. This is approaching 0. It's inconclusive. So there's some properties of series that we have to consider. If you're trying to find the series of a sum, you can find the uh, your sum of each term and then add the two uh, series together. Same thing with subtraction. You have a constant. If you have a constant in your series, you can pull the constant out, find the sum of this particular series, and then multiply it by the constant. So convergence or divergence is unaffected by deleting of finite terms from a series, in particular for any positive k integer. Um, again, whether this starts at 1 or starts at some other number, Again, we're, these will either both converge or diverge. So when you're trying to find the sum of the series, um, if you break it apart, if one of these diverges, the whole overall the series will also diverge. So again, when you're looking at breaking these apart, again, if one series diverges, the overall series will diverge. So let's take a look at this example. Find the sum of the series. Again, anytime they ask you to find the sum, it's got to be a telescopic or geometric. They're the only two series we're actually going to be worrying about finding the series, the um, sum of the series for. Now remember, again, what we can do is we can break this apart using my algebraic property of series, find the sum of 3 over 4 to the k minus k is equal to 1 to infinity of 2 over 5 raised to the k minus 1 power. So now let's take a look at this first one. I have a constant of 3. So I can use my constant rule, pull the 3 out, and write this as 1 over 4 raised to the k power. Again, I can also rewrite this as k is equal to 1 to infinity of 3 times 1 over 4 to the k. So this looks like a geometric, because I can write this as k is equal to 1 to infinity of 3 times 1 fourth to the k power. So again, this is a geometric series. The common ratio is 1 fourth, and I know the absolute value of 1 fourth is less than 1. So this is going to converge. So remember the formula to find the sum of your infinite geometric series. My first term, again, I'm starting at 1, is going to be 3 times 1 fourth, which is 3 fourths divided by 1 minus your common ratio of 1 fourth. So 3 fourths divided by 3 fourths is going to give me a 1. But now I also have to find the sum of this particular series. So again, this is going to be k is equal to 1 to infinity. I can rewrite this as 2 times 1 over 5 to the k minus 1, which is a geometric infinite series 2 times 1 fifth to the k minus 1. So again, the absolute value of my common ratio is less than 1, so I can find the sum of this series. So again, my first term, when I plug in 1, 1 minus 1 is 0, so that's going to leave me a 2 over 1 minus 1 fifth. So this is going to be 2 divided by 4 fifths, or 2 times 5 fourths. That's going to give me 10 fourths, which is just going to give me a 5 over 2. So now remember what I can do, I can now subtract these two sums. So 1 minus 5 halves is going to give me a negative 3 halves. So the next test is my integral test. So the expressions, the sum of your infinite series 1 over k squared relates to your improper integral going from 1 to infinity 1 over x squared. The following theorem shows that there's a relationship between the convergence of the series and your integral. So again, the conditions have to be that you have a function that is decreasing, and it has to be continuous on your interval from starting point to infinity. 
So if the series converges, so does this improper integral, or vice versa. Both will either converge or diverge. But again, you have a hypothesis on the divergent to, to use this particular test. First of all, all your terms have to be positive. So you cannot use this if you have an alternating series. All your terms have to be decreasing. And if you're not sure, that's where you go back to section 9.2 and you use your test for monotonicity, the differentiation, the ratio, or your difference test. And it has to be continuous. So if your interval converges, the series converges. If your interval diverges, the series diverges. So again, confirm, first of all, that your app, the uh, integral test is applicable. So we have to state the three conditions and use it to determine whether the series converges. So first of all, we know that all terms are positive. No matter what, the numerator and denominator are both positive. It is continuous. There's no place where this is function, this is undefined. So it is continuous. Now to be decreasing. Again, we know that no matter what, the denominator is always larger than the numerator. Again, if your numerator is smaller than the denominator, it's decreasing. The numbers are getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So then I'm going to use my integral test. So I can check off the three conditions. So again, I'm going to go from 1 to infinity. And I'm just going to change this to x over 1 plus x squared dx. So remember back in chapter 7 how we evaluated our improper integrals. I'm going to find the limit as b goes to infinity from 1 to b of x over 1 plus x squared dx. So I'm going to go ahead and do a u sub here. So u is equal to 1 plus x squared. My du is equal to 2x dx. So then I can rewrite this. I have to pull out a 1 half. So the limit as b goes to infinity of 1 half going from 1 to b of 1 over u du. So when I find this limit, it's going to be the limit as b goes to infinity of 1 half times the natural log of the absolute value of u, which is 1 plus x squared. And I'm going to evaluate this from 1 to b. So the limit as b goes to infinity of 1 half times the ln of 1 plus b squared minus 1 half times the ln of 1 plus 1 squared, which is 2. Well, this part right here, the one natural log of 1 plus b squared, again, b is getting larger and larger. This is diverging. So because this part diverges, automatically I know that this whole integral is going to diverge. And since your integral diverges, so does your series. Because again, remember the graph of natural log will go to infinity. So that is how your integral test works. So here's another one. So we're going from k is equal to 1 to infinity of 1 over 4 plus 2k raised to the 3 halves power. So again, using my integral test, I have to check, is it continuous? Is there any place that would make this series undefined? And again, since you're starting at 1, I'm not going to have a 0 in the denominator, so I do know it's continuous. All terms are positive. And decreasing. Again, no matter what, this denominator is always going to be larger than the numerator, so I know it is decreasing. So I can apply my integral test. Again, I'm going to go from 1 to infinity of 1 over 4 plus 2x raised to the 3 halves power dx. So again, remember the way we evaluated this improper integral, the limit as b goes to infinity from 1 to b, 1 over 4 plus 2x raised to the 3 halves power dx. Again, so I'm going to do a u sub. So u is equal to 4 plus 2x. My du is going to be 2 dx. So I'm going to have to pull out a 1 half. So I have the limit as b goes to infinity of 1 half 
Again, I'm going from 1 to B, and I'm just going to rewrite this as a U to the negative 3 halves DU. So the limit as B goes to infinity of 1 half. Again, when I integrate U to the negative 3 halves, I add 1. That's going to give me a U to the negative 1 half, which is 4 plus 2X raised to the negative 1 half. And then I have to divide by a negative 1 half, which means I'm going to multiply by a negative 2. So this is going to give me the limit as B goes to infinity of negative 1 over 4 plus 2x to the 1 half. And again, I'm going to evaluate this from 1 to infinity. So then the limit as B goes to infinity of negative 1 over 4 plus, oh, this is a B, excuse me, 2B raised to the 1 half minus 1, a negative 1, over, again, when I plug in a 1, that's going to be a 4 plus 2 to the 1 half. Well, I know that this right here, when I plug in a very, very, very large number, this is going to be approaching 0. And again, I know that this is going to be a constant. So this will, again, converge. Again, I don't care what it's converging to. I just want to state whether it's converging or diverging. So the next test we're going to talk about is a P-series, or your hyperharmonic. And again, you're going to find that this is one of your favorites tests. So this is where you have a constant as your base, and you have a <clears throat> you have your variable as a base raised to a power. So here's some examples of your P-series when P is equal to 1. So notice your base is a variable and it's raised to some power. So here's where k is to the first power. Here's where k is to the second power. Here's where k is actually raised to the one-half power. So your powers of the base can be fractions. So this is the way your P-series test works. So if you have your P-series, if P is greater than 1, it converges. So again, when you're looking at your powers, it will converge if P is greater than 1, and it will diverge if P is between 0 or less than or equal to 1. And you can prove this by using your integral test. So for example, when you look at 1 over the fourth root of K, again, here's K is equal to 1 to infinity of 1 over K to the 1 fourth. So this is your P series. Notice 1 fourth is between 0 and less than or equal to 1. So therefore, it's going to diverge by P-series. So if I rewrite again, make sure this is a positive exponent. So K is equal to 1 to infinity of 1 over K to the 4 thirds. So here's another P-series. Again, notice the exponent 4 thirds is greater than 1, so it's going to converge. So this is another test I'm sure you're going to find to be one of your favorites, and this is a polynomial test. And again, it's not in one of your, it's not in your textbook. And this deals with rational functions. So again, you have to compare the degree of the numerator and the degree of the denominator. So here is a series that will converge if the degree of the numerator plus 1 is less than the denominator. And it will diverge if the degree of the numerator plus 1 is greater than or equal to the denominator. So the degree of the numerator plus 1 has to be less than the denominator to converge. So here's an example of where we can use your polynomial test. So again, the degree of the numerator is a 1. The degree of the denominator is 4. So again, 1 plus 1, the degree of the numerator plus 1, is going to be less than 4. So since 2 is less than 4, this is going to converge by your polynomial test. So here is the numerator with the degree of 1. The denominator is a degree of 1. So 1 plus 1 is greater than 1. So since 2 is greater than 1, it's going to diverge by your polynomial test. Sometimes be careful. They're not written in standard form. 
The degree of the numerator here is a 6. The degree of the denominator is 3. So 6 plus 1 is greater than 3. So this will also diverge. So now the toughest part is when they're all mixed up like this. So this is where you have to decide which test you're going to use. Um, so out of the test, we're going to use divergence, integral, p-series, or polynomial to decide if it converges or diverges. <clears throat> it is possible that you can use more than one test. Some of you may decide to use one test. Some of you may decide to use another, and that's okay. So what I'm going to do on this one, I have 1 divided by the square root of um, k plus 5. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use my integral test. And remember the conditions for your integral test. First of all, all terms have to be positive, which they are in this series. It's going to be continuous. I'm not going to get a 0 in the denominator starting with k is equal to 1. And decreasing. So the larger my numerator gets, I know it's going to be decreasing. So I can start by finding the limit as b goes to infinity, going from 1 to b. And I'm just going to write this as um, 1 over x plus 5 to the 1 half dx. Again, I can write this as u is equal to x plus 5. My du is equal to dx. So I can rewrite this as the limit as b goes to infinity of the integral from 1 to b of u to the negative 1 half du. And I can integrate this. The limit as b goes to infinity. Again, u to the negative 1 half plus 1, that's going to give me a u to the 1 half. Divide by 1 half, which means I'm going to multiply by 2. So this is going to be the limit as b goes to infinity of 2 times x plus 5 to the 1 half. And again, I'm going to evaluate this from b to 1. Again, well, if I plug in b and look at the limit as b is going to infinity, there, this limit is not going to exist, so this is going to diverge. So when I look at a problem like P, um, <clears throat> first of all, I really won't want to use my integral test. It's not a P-series, nor is it a polynomial. So I'm going to go ahead and try the divergence test. So this is where, remember, I want to find the limit as k goes to infinity, and as long as it's not equal to 0, it diverges. Plus, I know that if I have to use L'Hopital's rule, it's not a really bad problem to use when I have to use L'Hopital's rule. So the limit as k goes to infinity, so again, um, this is my divergence test, it's going to be k divided by the natural log of 2k minus 1. Again, I want to look at the limit of the numerator and divide it by the limit of the denominator. The limit of the numerator is infinity, the limit of the denominator is infinity. So again, I can go ahead and use L'Hopital's. So the limit as k goes to infinity, again, the derivative of the k is just 1 over the derivative of the natural log of 2k minus 1. Again, I'm going to have to um, use my chain rule. So it's 1 over 2k minus 1 times 2. So 2 divided by 2k minus 1. So again, this is going to give me 2k minus 1 over 2. And again, this, as it goes to infinity, is going to diverge. So again, I have k times e to the negative k squared. Again, this is one where you could use your integral test or you could use your divergence test. Because remember, this is going to be k is equal to 1 to infinity of k over e to the negative k squared. So. I'm just going to go ahead, though, and I'm going to use my, um, this should be a positive k squared. I'm going to go ahead and use my integral test. Again, all terms are positive. It is continuous, and my terms are decreasing. So again, I'm going to do the limit as b goes to infinity from 1 to b of k over e to the k squared. And again, the only reason that I'm um, using my integral test because looking at this right now, I'm afraid that the limit, if I try to use the diver divergence test, the limit may go to zero, which means I'm going to have to pick another test anyway. So I'm going to do a u sub. So u is equal to k squared. My du is equal to 2k dk. So again, there's my, I have to factor out a one half. So the limit as b goes to infinity from 1 to b of 
1 over e to the u du. And there's my 1 half in the front. So the limit as b goes to infinity of e to the negative u du. So here's this e to the negative u. Again, uh, when I have to do the integration, sorry about that, I had to stop there. From 1 to b. So this is going to be when I integrate this, the limit as b goes to infinity of negative 1 half e to the negative k, e to the negative k squared. And again, I'm going to evaluate this from 1 to b. So again, if I rewrite this, Sorry, I'm getting squished here. Limit as b goes to infinity of negative one half times. I'm just going to leave that negative one half factor out. That's going to be one over e to the k squared. And again, I'm evaluating this from one to b. So the big question is, what's happening as um, b is going to infinity? So when I plug in a b, it's going to be one over e to the b squared. This is approaching zero. So I know this is going to converge by your integral test. So since your integral converges, so does the series. So let's take a look at b. So k is equal to 1 to infinity. So the question is, I got the inverse tangent in the numerator over 1 plus k squared. So now, when I take a look at this, what's happening with the inverse tangent as you go to infinity? If you remember what the graph of inverse tangent looks like, you have two horizontal asymptotes at pi over 2 and negative pi over 2. So the graph of your inverse tangent looks like this. So when I go ahead and try to evaluate what's happening, the limit. So what's happening with this numerator is this is approaching pi over 2. So when I look at this series, I have the inverse tangent of k over 1 plus k squared. This is approaching pi over 2. I have a numerator that is a pi over 2. So really what I have here is this series, k is equal to 1 to infinity of pi over 2 over 1 plus k squared. I can pull the pi over 2 out by my properties of series, and they get 1 over 1 plus k squared. So again, I'm going to go ahead and use my integral test. Terms are positive, it is continuous, and it is decreasing because, again, the terms in the denominator are getting larger and larger. The denominator is getting larger and larger. So, again, I've got your integral going from 1 to infinity multiplied by pi over 2 and the limit as b is approaching infinity. So, I'll change this upper bound to a b of 1 over 1 plus x squared dx. Well, notice this is your inverse tangent, so the limit as b approaches infinity of pi over 2 times your inverse tangent of x. And again, I'm going to evaluate this from 1 to b. So again, I just talked about what happens. Inverse tangent of b, this is going to be approaching pi over 2. Minus the inverse tangent of 1 is pi over 4. So this is going to converge by your integral test. So let's look at the next one. So k is, again, it doesn't matter where the lower bound starts. k is equal to 10 to infinity. So again, now look at this k to the negative e. So I can rewrite this as k is equal to 10 to infinity of 3 over k to the e. Remember, I can pull this 3 out using your constant rule of series. Remember, my base is a variable. E is a number. It's a number about 2.7. So this is actually 1 over k raised to the 2.7. So this is a p series. And again, 2.7 is greater than 1. So this is going to converge by your p series. So remember, this, that just because that exponent, it could be a pi or an e in this particular case. And then finally, if you take a look at f, um, again, this is a polynomial, so this would be great for your polynomial test. 
the degree of the numerator is 3, the degree of the denominator is 4. So 3 plus 1 is going to be greater than or equal to 4. So 4 is equal to 4. So this is going to diverge by your polynomial test. And that's the, um, your, the sum of your tests.